I'm not gonna say PA, what is pH because I think it's gonna be this nuts joke. So I'm not gonna fall for it. We're gonna go right through it. Sacrificial Chalice. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not hyped about this card. I think there's nothing too crazy about it. I think we might see it played uh, at some point. It's definitely not an A, not an S tier, not an A tier. I don't think it's even a B tier. I'm gonna put a solid C. Just the corn side. No. Okay. Stop it. Stop. What is a corn side? <laughs> um <laughs> but we're gonna remove yeah we're just gonna put sacrificial chalice on c i think there might be an archetype that might benefit from having such an aggressive card but i think at this point it's like mm, it's just wasting one card and you need a setup i think there are better ways to have one card sitting on your hand even if you're aggro and this is potentially like what six strength uh i guess if you get to put it on one minion at one turn and just hit really hard it could be good but again it's tough i think it's tough this is a finisher i mean i can see it as a finisher but then what are you telling me you need these in your hand alongside ragnarok brimstone uh dangerous ritual and you're gonna play them all uh yeah i don't know about that i think it's a little bit scary i think it's a little bit slow i think right now the meta of the game is to play really aggressive decks uh gp plus two low cost spells to, to deal damage even so i don't think this is that strong i think this is a c tier maybe b tier May, like i could consider this being a b tier uh but everyone running necros anyways like reality is uh, you don't want to waste a spot i feel like most of the times you just don't want to waste a spot sitting on a car like this one uh so there's no place for it right now i'm gonna say it's b tier because it's the start of the tier list but i might be making a few changes going through the through the cards if i see like some potential combos that might change the evaluation but i think it's gonna be sitting on a b tier right now as, as it is right now yeah we're gonna move on to the next one pain stalker two mana cost uh and the text is leech roar if your god has 15 or less health gain plus two plus two this card is weird and i'll tell you why it's a two mana the, the most important thing about this card is it has no text there's nothing going on i mean no 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 tag it has no tag which means like it doesn't have a lot of synergies so like with with other combos or with other cards but by its own it's a two mana two three with leech that's already good that's already decent i don't see this card being anything less than a b tier because stats wise and effect wise it's a two mana two three with leech and that's already pretty decent so just by stats alone it's kind of nice and how often do dead players get their hp beneath 15 well two mana four five with leech is low key really good um I'd say this card makes a lot of sense to be played on a deck that, let's think about it, uses Sacrificial Chalice. You can end up, like, leeching for, like, what? Uh, it's a 4 and then plus 6. Like, you can, in theory, end up get leech, leech by 10, right? And, again, it might be good. I can also see Sacrificial Chalice being played with, like, over the line. I can see this being used in over the line where you just do damage to yourself and then like necronomics deals damage to your own god so you get plus two and then necro like necronomics sacrificial chalice i mean i guess sacrificial chalice necronomics over the line and you get a lot of damage done and stuff like that so i can maybe see this card making some sense i don't think it's bad uh what do you got right now it's not a matter of what we caught because if we end up building a completely new archetype then it's about what do you get on there right it doesn't really matter we gotta we gotta see what other cards we get and then we can start asking ourselves what do we got but i think for me this is gonna be at least a b tier i'm not gonna put it on a tier because there might you know it might get better but right now i'm thinking sacrificial chalice can be a c and plain soccer can be an a but we're gonna keep up moving uh three mana cost servilia fetter white at the end of it's, it's a three mana at the end of your turn both gods draw a card and take damage equal to its mana cost then if either deck is empty set this creature's strength and health equal to your opponent's god held what the fuck is going on with this card uh this is complicated for sure <laughs> 
So they take damage equal to the mana cost of the card they draw, which is Loki really good. If you're facing any control deck and they draw a Randion, I guess some, all, all of the empowered cards get an extra value or extra benefit because they don't do as much damage as big as the effect they have. So you want to run empowered cards against this card because let's say on Bound Flames is a four mana damage to your face that is actually works as a seven mana cost AOE, which is way stronger, right? So empower is better against this. That's the first thing that I can think about. Um, it seems to me like a really strong card to have on the board. You're both taking damage, but if you are the aggro deck, you're always taking like one damage, two damage, three damage at most, which makes it like worth it, right? Because you're not face tanking as much. It seems to be pretty versatile. I am I'm I'm, I'm enjoying every single piece of it. I don't really see getting into the end game that often. It's not like you're playing a deck that benefits from this guy and then boom. Uh my opening was 30 HP and I get a 30-30 card, right? It's not gonna happen that often. So um, I think this part of the text, it might not be as important as it is, but it could actually matter in some games. Uh, is this throw it up on the S brother S, but only because she's hot as fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? A, I don't know if I want to. The thing is, if there's an archetype that just really works with these, just going face damage, which already happens with the dragons, I guess it could be really good um but you're taking the damage three mana two four doesn't really trade that nicely but it has higher survivability than neferu because you get to play this card one turn earlier neferu it's at three mana uh, neferu is four mana four four right so neferu it's just as healthy as this guy she's four hp neferu doesn't do damage to your face but she has to be killed immediately this one does damage to your face, has less attack, but it gets earlier into the board. And uh, like Frost Queen Nefer, it's already pretty good though. I, I, that's the card that I'm, you know, comparing her to. Frost Queen Nefer is also doing a lot of damage. You gotta kill her immediately. It doesn't see as much. It doesn't see played on every single deck. Maybe it does. Imagine this with Imp on board versus Aggro War, game over by turn 3. Yeah, I mean, if, if that were to happen, game's over at turn 3, but it could be either the War player game or your game. You don't really know who's winning at that point. Strictly, strictly saying, I don't think Frost Queen Neferu is an S. And I think I'm going to put Servilia Feather White on A. Thinking about maybe putting her... A little bit, a little bit higher. Maybe the S. I dread this where I see it being playable. How if either deck is empty? The thing is, either deck being empty doesn't really matter on that condition. And then if you're playing dreads, I guess it's not that good. Because if they draw a dread, they don't take as much damage then, right? So it's not it's it's not amazing for dreads, I would believe ah uh, i'm feeling i think i'm gonna give it an a for the time being um and i think she's gonna sit on there for, the, for, for for a while and i'm gonna be you know changing a few cards so don't think this is this is staying this way right but we realize draw and damage is every turn yeah it's every turn at the end of your turn i guess so it's not like some cards have effect at the end of every single turn this is your turn which is still pretty good though um but i think like frost queen nerfu arguably can be a little bit more consistent and more and like better uh but i guess you're both drawing and like drawing is not bad if you're an aggro deck ah uh, i mean maybe maybe i'll keep an eye on her it's a good meal card and the thing is yeah it's a good meal card right we'll, we'll, we'll keep looking a nubian scale master uh front line four mana cost roar summon a 2-2 bile reaver so this is the Blitz card that has burn 1, that is an Anuvian, if you do not remember. Um, if your god has 15 less health, summon 3 instead. Who the fuck asked for new Anuvian cards? Wait, isn't it, isn't it you, the guy who plays Anuvian? Isn't you, Plucky, the one who is probably really happy about this outcome? Are you playing as the Uno card by being like, who the fuck, who the fuck asked for it? No, hell no? Wait, no? Wait, really? I thought it was you, the, the Anuvian player. Hmm. Well, who who is a Nubian player? I'm pretty sure someone on chat right now is like a solid, solid Nubian player and loves it. 
but I don't remember who it is. Well, I guess. Um, four mana, two four frontline summon three ball reavers. I mean, this can be really nice. Anubian players do tend to get pretty low HP wise because uh, they are actually not the best deck to fight for the board. Uh, they do a lot of damage. This plays around Void Hate quite nicely as well. Uh, oh, zero Void Hate instead, by the way. We definitely love Toxic Anops. So, like, the, the good thing about Anubian Scale Master is compared to. What's the, the name of the spell? Threat in the night or something in the night that gives you three random Anubians from your graveyard? First of all, this is not random. Second of all, you don't need a big setup other than being 15 HP, which is gonna happen at some point in the game. Because, I mean, either you won the game or you're getting killed and you get your HP reduced to 15. So that's gonna happen. Unless you get OTK in one turn and you don't get a chance to play it, which might be the case. Um, I think this card might be solid. Now, is Anubian strong enough to be back into the meta and fully, fully get benefits from playing this card? I'm not exactly sure. I think that's going to be the issue. I think the card is good itself, but whether we see Anubians being played or not, uh, it's going to make a big difference. Now, if you think about it, you could play Control Death and play Anubian Scale Master as a control card and you don't really even need to play Anubians this could just be a resource for any deck out there so uh the more I think about it the more I'm trying to say this card is kind of busted it's 4 mana to 4 even if you don't get 15 HP you're still getting 4 mana 4 6 stats and a blitzer and a front line no 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 actually this card is absolutely freakingly busted yeah this is, I think, my first S, uh, for sure. This is this is just too strong. This card's gonna get nerfed. Uh, it's really good stats. It's super versatile. It works with the Anubian concept. It doesn't have to pursue it anyways. You can just go for the full value. Yeah, this guy, this one is getting, uh, this one is getting nerfed. This one is gonna get the crawling madness treatment. Like we're not gonna change it. We're not gonna change it. We're not gonna change it. Wait a minute. Everybody keeps complaining. You know what? We're gonna change it. And then boom, it's it's gone. Uh it's not gone. Crawling Madness still sees some play, but it's just it just reminds me of Crawling Madness. It just reminds me of the Crawling Madness. First, we're gonna see a small change. We're gonna remove something out of the deck. We're gonna remove the front line. Maybe we're gonna make it a, a one four, something like that. And then boom. Suddenly, instead of summoning three ball reverse, you're gonna summon one, and he has burned five. <laughs> something like that. Um, but yeah, then reduce reverse. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, maybe. The thing is, this is really good. No matter how you look at it, it's a four mana two four with frontline, and having frontline in the game, it's already, you know, something that should reduce the stats on the card. But it's a four mana four six, and half of those stats have blitz, which makes it really really strong. And then if you're going mid game, like slash late game, and you're playing control dead. And you're 15 HP, you get four mana, eight, ten stats. And two, four of those stats have frontline, and the other six, six have blitz, and you can distribute that damage the way you want to. So I'm gonna save you the tears. You this is gonna get nerfed. Now, whether it gets nerfed or not, does that mean I should not look for this card or buy it? You should probably. Because from what we have seen is diamond cards, gold cards, high quality cards will be really, really useful. So with new game modes and everything, you still want to get this card, even if it means it's going to get nerfed. That's not getting nerfed. It's getting buffed. <laughs> Surely. But we're going to move on to the next one. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I cannot agree with that sentiment. Let's keep the ball reverse lich too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think that makes sense. I I I believe you, man. I trust you. And also it has the plus value that if you are playing, if you are playing Anubians, then you wanna play this card. The issue is like any dead player, this is just like the beagle scenario. This is like the beagle scenario. 
no matter what deck you're playing you can be playing aggro you can be playing midrange you can be playing control but you want to play this card no matter what so it's like really 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 good so i'm gonna say it's gonna get nerfed uh grave equality four mana it's a spell summon a creature from your void and copy for your opponent give yours bleeds uh, 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 um. Wait, for this card, I need to look at something. Because I believe... Whenever another Anubian dies, deal the damage to your opponent's god. Wait, where's the tier list? Where did I put the tier? Oh, it's on the left side. Okay, this one is right here. There you go. Summon a creature from your void and give your opponent a copy for your opponent. Give your splits. So, like, okay, grave equality. I'm trying to think what card would I like to have. Hmm. I mean, there's a few things you can do with this card. This card is really, really interesting because, first of all, I mean, I guess we're only getting six death cards, so this is what we got for one for meal one one guy. Like, we can actually bring Servilia Feather White. We can actually bring Servilia, and at the end of everyone's turn, everybody's gonna be taking damage from the cards they draw, and then like you know, it, it's gonna be annoying for them having this card as well, right? Because now they're taking damage. So in a way, I'm feeling like Grave Equality. It's a card you want to have with Servilia Feather White, but I do feel there must be something better than that. That's my first instinct. Uh, let's see. Like, I can see you playing Bumpfly and then trading the Bumpfly and making like six damage phase with four mana. But both players are getting the six damage phase. So, what is a card that I would love to have on my board that I can trade against my opponent? What is a card that I would love to have on the board that I would love to trade against my opponent? There must be something really special about this card that I'm overlooking because I can't remember all the cards right now. How do I browse? How do I... Palo? Palo. I understand, filter. So let's go with that. And let's, let's just look at the last few expansions. Bum, 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 bum. Let's just look at these because I think these ones have the most impact. You play that on Scarab and draw four, kind of funny. It's like half life, sorry. It's actually that's insane yeah borrowing scarp into trading borrowing scarp can be pretty nasty oh balaging oh and balaging gets to trade actually that's really good you get your opponent two threads but you get yourself uh you get yourself four threads on there which honestly it's a little bit of rng so i'm not exactly sure Hmm. I guess you can play, you can get Rotting Dreadworm and trade yours. Now you have like two five fives and your opponent doesn't. But it's not like that breathtaking, right? Am I missing something? I guess your luck heart gets overkill. And yours is summoned from the void. Is your opponent's luck heart summoned from the void? And also, which one happens first? But honestly, getting luck heart, it's never consistent, right? Because you never get an A drop on the graveyard soon, anyways. Um, mixed feelings about this card. Not gonna lie, I can't really think about something that is super impact impactful right now. There's definitely something out there. I just can't think about it right now. For the time being, I'm gonna give it a B tier because I'm like 99% sure I'm missing out on something. But the card has a lot of potential. It's probably better than Half Life in a deck like Four Wave Dead, but Sleep Dead sucks. Sleep that absolutely sucks right now. They just don't have a great end game, and I don't think any of these cards is giving like giving a, giving that like insane end game. So I don't think it won't matter as much. 
But let's keep looking. The last card, Possess Flesh. Destroy an enemy creature. Your god takes damage equal to its health. If your god has 15 health or less, summon that creature from the void under your control. Mm, yeah, I already thought about Grave Equality into Servilia is the end game. I don't think Servilia is the end game. I think any any card that just any any card that their effect is about having no cards and stuff like that, it doesn't matter. It just gets killed and that's it. Um the like it just gets one shot by a spell. You need something like that which aches to, to get a huge end game momentum. And with Mimic and Pot, Pot of the Dead into Mimic, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, does it? I don't think it matters. I mean, I could see it getting a lot of Servilias there, trying to one shot your opponent and try to mill them, but I, I still don't get it. Oh, wait a minute. Servilia does something really interesting. Servilia does something really, really, really interesting that other decks did not have. Wait, does Servilia counters that which feeds us? Because now you make them draw? No, because they get to shuffle again. 3-3 every turn for 3 turns. I don't think it's that good of an endgame. Maybe it is, but I don't believe it. Also, you're saying your opponent's like full HP, right? So you full control the board, then play 3-3 three times. And then they play like one swallow hole. They play like one card to steal stats. And now you have to deal with a 90-90 that we chase. Or, or they they play freaking... Uh, what's the spell that steals the strength from a minion? They, they play unnatural selection or there, there's so many ways this goes strong for for dead against nature anyway so i think it doesn't matter like one regression deals with it i don't think so i think this is not great end game um and it's easy to clear you mill their wing cons we will see i mean surely we'll, we'll see though but i am not super hyped on this i'm not super hyped on the train though um possess flesh the enemy creature if you got a 15 or less health, summon that creature from the void under your control. I think this can be actually really strong. Like, okay, they are giving control decks. Like, th this is a good control card. This is arguably a good control card. This is also a good control card. And this is also a good control card. And if you're playing meal control, which is not always the meta, like, there's a few other ways to play dead control. Could be board wipe dead, could be like sleep dead, could even be rock breaks. I think, I think. I think this is okay, but none of them is crazy good. I think Possessed Flesh has potential to give you a lot of value if we ever go back to a tempo-oriented meta. But again, if the meta is to play combo, Possessed Flesh makes no difference because combo decks don't even care about this. It just, it all depends on how far we're going to go from combo being the meta on the game, right? So if nothing changes, this might, this might, this might not be as good um i'm still gonna give it a b tier for the time being it, it has potential but again i need to see what other cards we are printing from the other domains to give it a more accurate assessment uh on on which sending it should be on but i think right now this is how the tier list is looking i'm putting serpility on an a tier but i'm not 100 sure on what day would i play her i think anuvian skill master is undoubtedly the most broken card we have seen right now and i think it's gonna get nerfed 10 out of 10 it's too good to be true i think playing soccer can be really good uh if i had to order them i would order them this way and this would actually be the order in which i have them i think playing soccer can actually be an a tier maybe uh but i think this is the way i like them right now uh and i guess we will we move on to the next um we move on to the next section right filter we're gonna move on to deception so uh deception is getting okay it seems like every set is getting six cards or every god which is pretty cool i like that uh one mana cost poison gunch berries i never had gunch berries myself before maybe they are tasty but they give a creature burn plus three and afterlife give a random friendly creature burn plus three I could see this card being played and at the same time i don't like it because i feel it is too slow um it kind of reminds me of ragnarok 
but Ragnarok is way more efficient. Ragnarok it does damage to your own face, but you get burned to everybody, and you don't have to wait that many turns for the effect to proc. So um I'm going to say this is not great looking for me. I'm not even going to think too much about it. I'm going to give it a C tier. The berries are elite. Maybe they are elite. They don't give burn to yourself. And it forces your opponent not to play anything on that sense. Maybe if you play them on turn one against an aggro deck, it could make a lot of sense. Like against aggro war, they start with skulking. You drop these. You slow them down for a while. Uh maybe b tier i'm gonna let it on b tier but for me it's gonna be the lowest rated b tier we have right now uh let's go to the next one two mana cost divertimento shuffle two cards into your deck draw the three cards shuffle two cards into your deck draw three cards you open and shuffle two random cards into their deck and draws three cards shuffle two cards into your deck so i grab two cards from my hand and i put them on my deck and then I draw three cards. Let's go. Your opponent shuffles two, two random cards, in, cards into their deck and draws three cards. So I'm going to take away from their hand. They don't get to pick them. And then they draw three. And I pick two and then I draw three. But I wasted three cards to draw three. But I get to shuffle my hand. So Divertimento is basically me playing Flip. And my and forcing my opponent to play flip as well, but they are getting their cards randomly. I don't like that concept. Why do I have to play flip? I think flip is not not. Uh, I mean, I can just play flip myself. It's basically the same outcome. I don't need to run a card and waste one spot. Flip will get me two random cards, remove two random cards. These will re will remove three cards from my hand, give me three cards from my hand. So. Flip is just better because I don't have to waste space and I can do it whenever I want. So it's a bit tier for me at the time. Uh, maybe the potential of removing a mana search card from your from your opponent's hand or something like that. But you're also essentially making them draw one more. It's two mana. Make your opponent draw one as well. So unless you're playing meal deception, this could go really, really, really wrong um because you, you're just making them draw which is pointless so divertimento maybe the tier who knows not excited about this one not right now at least maybe i'm missing out on something but this is flip with extra steps and less reward because you even get your opening a new card uh two mana call shadow of tower dread hidden after this creature after a creature with hidden is summoned or a creature gains hidden give it plus one strength so like in okay the, we get I think in a wild, a card that supports Hidden Rush Deception, which is interesting. Um, hidden Rush Deception on the meta. I truly don't know how I feel about this. I like it. I think it's going to be annoying to face. Uh, it's a two mana one, two. I think this card had the potential of being one mana. And I could be like... It could be too good, but right now I think it's playable. I'm just not excited about playing it. It's just entirely for aggro. And Hidden Rush Deception, it's a little bit lackluster once uh, cheating or, you know, the, the god power that makes your card have hidden for one turn, three mana. It is too expensive. So I'm going to say, again, not super great. I'm going to give it a C tier. I think might see a buff. It's just... I mean, every single time you give hidden to something, they gain plus one strength. But I feel like I would much rather just play a switching duelist, or I would just much rather play a more useful two mana cost card than playing Shadow of the Tower Dread. Uh, is Divertimento like a Spanish word? Just asking. It sounds Spanish. I'm not. I've never heard the word before. Uh, but it's definitely like, like Spanish looking word uh yeah i'm gonna say it's a c to you for the time being uh be aware of what you say i'm looking at you wait is this italian oh this might be italian sounds italian i'm gonna say that arrivederci buongiorno gelato bambino tomato thank you that's me uh three mana cost pizza pasta mandolino there you go there you go there you go i didn't know lexi to do it the mirror? What do you mean the mirror? 
Oh, okay. Countless de la Por. Roar. Gain hidden after these attacks and survives. Transform into the countless countess mirror and equip it. So you play her and then she needs to attack and survive, which means she has to go face or attack a creature with zero attack, which is not going to happen that often. And then you get this good looking funny mirror. Let me put this to the left side so you guys get to see it. Um, after a friendly creature attacks and survives, summon a soulless copy of it that attacks the same target and lose one durability. After life, summon Countess de la Poor. So, okay, okay, I get the vibe now. Uh, it just feels complicated. Again, it looks way more like an aggro card than anything else. Um, you need to attack with her. And then once you attack with her, you need to attack with another minion once you have the relic equipped. And then you're going to summon a copy of the minion and it's going to attack the target. So she can set up some really nice, strong combos. But how often are we going to get the mirror procged? Because essentially you need a few minions. And you need Countess de Laporte to survive any, any clear. She's also 3 mana, which is a little bit expensive to play having this effect and having 1 HP. Because let's take a look at Sevilla. You know what's the thing about Sevilla is... Sevilla, on the other hand, he has 4 HP for 3 mana. This girl has 1, but she is hidden. Um, it's definitely suited for Hidden Rush Deception. Definitely suited for Hidden Rush Deception. I can see them getting some value. They are giving Hidden Rush Deception some love. And like that's what we're looking with Shadow of Tower Dread. Divertimento, I think it's useless. And then Poison Grunge Berries. I mean, maybe for control, maybe for aggro. It could work both ways. But it's just... It just feels like if you're playing against any control deck, anyone, and they have one way to clear the board, you're you're in so much pain. Like if you ever waste three mana and then you get Auric Rush or Bar Fight or Savage Strike or Tracking Bolt or the one mana cost Apple from Nature deals one damage or like any spell, any card, you're gonna feel bad about it. Because Aggro decks don't have time to waste. If you're wasting time as an aggro deck playing something like this and it gets answered immediately, you feel like you already lost the game. That's oftentimes the feeling of aggro. If you cannot just do something quite strong and proactive on that turn, you feel like you're just falling far behind too fast and you're not going to win the game on time. And that's the vibe that I'm getting from her. Uh, for the time being, I'm going to give her a B tier status. I think it's better. I think it's better than Sacrificial Chalice. Uh, it's probably not better than Possessed Flesh, even though it's this, it's a dead card against a Deception card. But I'm gonna put it on there. Think of the Little Prowler meme, though. Oh, Little Pro. The thing is, Little Prowler already goes face. You don't you don't even need this for Little Prowler to work. So you can just create a copy of Little Prowler. You would love this if you had like um. This is for getting a really strong 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 minion like let's say the one that copies the attack of another minion like let's say you go dark knives dark knives switching duelist and then your switching duelist go face and then another switching duelist goes face and you deal like 18 damage in one turn that's pretty nasty right i think that's the goal for this card but how often is that gonna happen i'm not really sure shadow of letano with the tower ffs shadow of letano with the, the thing is the guys the meta is just gonna adapt like maybe right now people are not gonna get as punished but if people are really playing these aggro decks with one hp the meta is gonna shift there's so many ways to deal one damage to cards it won't really matter it's just a matter of how fast the meta changes to adapt against against these type of decks uh and so i believe this is not gonna be super strong it could it, it definitely has mean potential but I don't think it's going to be insanely nasty. Unless there's a way to proc this immediately. Like, let's say... How could you ever make her attack immediately and get the relic immediately? And also, she can stay on the board forever. So if you don't answer her, she's a setup that will never... I guess relic room. The thing is, relic removal kills this card as well. She goes face. Your opponent plays relic removal. Well... 
the, the setup is hard the setup is hard i'm gonna say oh no but after okay no no relic removal only spawns back counters the labor so it doesn't answer immediately mm. I still don't see a huge value on here. So I'm just going to leave here B tier for the time being. And we're going to move on to the next one. 3 mana cost imprisoned here. Hair. Frontline cannot attack. Afterlife's mana copy of the weakest creature in your opponent's hand. Now this one is actually super spicy, man. <laughs> This one has a lot of potential if you're ever facing like a greedy control deck because there's gonna be moments There's definitely gonna be moments on which they only have like a really strong 8 mana cost 7 mana cost banger This could be really good. Actually, that card is stupid. Yeah, I'm I don't know how to feel about it mm, It could be really good. Honestly, it could be really really good Yeah, what up, Libas? How are you doing, my man? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, seems very annoying, copper control. It makes the opponent play different than they want. The reality is... Burn it, copy, and return to hand, or fuck up combos. The thing is, this card doesn't... Doesn't fuck... Doesn't fucked up the combos. She doesn't do anything to the combos. And that's the issue. Like, this card is really weak against combo anyways. Because combos don't even play, like, strong minions. So you only copy. Yeah, you only copy. You do not remove the card. So this is, like, all hope is not lost. So, like, this card is decent if your opponent is sitting on, like, a Randion. And they only have a Randion and a lot of spells. And then you play this card and you get an Arandion for free on like turn 5, turn 4. That would be pretty nice because Arandion is hard to deal with for 12 chunky spell boost. So that would be annoying. But then how often are we facing Arandion on, on, on the meta? Like honestly, how often is Arandion being played against you guys? Not that often. You get a Hortug, you don't get the same value because you're just getting the 5-5 five five without the roar, which is low-key underwhelming. Um... You get what? You you get uh just focus, just cast four shimmering spires against the ran quite often actually. I think the card is good, but I'm just wondering if it's good for the meta we're currently facing. And I think the answer is kinda no. I think the meta so far we have seen value for Nuvians. Like we have just seen more aggressive cards. This is just more aggressive gameplay. So against a really aggressive gameplay, do you ever have time to play a 3 mana cost 0 3? I guess she has frontline. Um again, I'm gonna say B tier slash C tier just because I don't see the potential realizing right now. It seems like the meta is going even more aggro, so combo decks get countered by aggro decks. And that's how we fix the issue we're facing right now. People were complaining about combo decks. How do you defeat combo decks? We just go we we just go more aggro and then we need more tempo to defeat aggro decks and we more more we need more value to defeat aggro decks and stuff like that more clears how you put shadow tower of dread to see and it's gonna remain on there i just don't i think the meta will adapt to these type of cards pretty fast that's s you guys play it you guys play Shadow Shadow of Tower Dread. I'm going to say the meta is just going to shift to a, to an archetype that just deals with hitting creatures pretty easily. And that's it. There's nothing else to, to be worried about. My man cannot read. After a creature with hidden is summoned or a creature gains hidden, give it plus one strength. That's so so boring, so slow, so useless. Um, We're going to go. Yeah, I think this is C tier for the time being. Uh, Five mana costs. Cap your hearts. Deal 5 damage to a creature. If it if it is destroyed, obliterated, and all cards with the same name everywhere. Um like true. Actually true. Like this actually defeats the bunny. 
but I don't think that's too good. I don't I don't think this is actually like too good. It's okay though. The fuck Trump is live streaming asking to make a tier list with you. Uh who Trump Trump the Trump the Let's take a look. What the fuck? Trade watching. <laughs> uh, Trump's not streaming. What do you mean? Divertimento will probably work like flips. So it will be trash. Yeah, exactly. That's just that's exactly what we said. Like, bro, real Trump. Oh, I don't think he wants to make a tier list with me. Then you had even the you mentioned the left bar. Uh, I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't run this. I think this might be okay. I think this is underwhelming, underwhelming, underwhelming. And I think this is good against nature. Let's. See, what else is this good at against? Um. I mean, I wouldn't mind playing these. I guess you can kill Coronet. Capture hearts, you kill Coronet and you remove it from the game. So this is like a good Coronet counter. You still need to survive one strong minion though. I guess it's also good in Nubiant. Yeah, yeah, it's good against those as well. Uh... I guess if you kill White Fury, then they won't have another one. True. Um, you can copy Teacher, play it, and obliterate. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I mean, how do you copy Teacher? That seems like a lot of steps. And I haven't really faced Cool Teacher myself recently. So is teacher even being used? I mean, it's good against dragons. It's good against afterlife minions. It's good against that which feeds us. It's an okay card. I could see it like some people are playing it on control and being and getting value. And then I could also just see him being like slightly underwhelming clear card that doesn't do much, right? I mean, I wouldn't be mad playing a five mana cost and a lay horde just to make sure I don't get to deal with the second lay horde because it's such an annoying card. Uh, I'd say it's B tier as well. Deception in my eyes really underwhelming. The biggest heater right now, it's it's definitely dead. I think a Nubian skill master is absolutely broken. Uh, but yeah, the bunny killer. I guess the the thing is the the deception actually needed a bunny killer. And and the worst thing is, isn't can does dearly remove spells? No, dearly doesn't remove spells right now. Didn't control deception already fuck nature though? Yeah, th that's exactly like did this did deception needed more help? I would arguably say dead needed help against the set against nature, but they are not really getting it that much. Uh think and Nubian decks still get wrecked though, which is funny. Definitely didn't need a bunny clear when they have a million million bunny stealers. I mean deception can still struggle against nature, even if they can copy the bunny. Because I mean Nature is gonna have a bigger bunny than, than they do, but then like deception can run charm and just get more tricks out of nowhere and just surprise your opponent more often. You have to play a more greedy deck, which makes it a lot weaker against aggro decks, but it's still fine, right? Best pit killer. I guess I guess cap your heart. It's oh I didn't really thought about it. No, yeah, I guess that's nice. Having a way to deal with the light with the light decks, which are incredibly annoying it's it's a good feeling actually a good feeling so we get a way to actually remove the combo i also feel like if there was one god that could deal with best speed was probably got them light because they can steal so many resources they can be so annoying um i mean deception right but yeah i'm gonna keep it on b tier just because did deception really needed more help against combos i think deception in reality is the only deck that can really nicely deal with any combo on the on, on the game right and it's still a five mana cost card so you're it's gonna take you some time to get there 
So I think B tier is suitable for that card on the time being. And we're going to move on to the next one. We're going to light. Uh, ooh, light looking werewolf theme. Are we going to have some vampire theme? Because this seems to be, this is werewolf. Yeah. If we get vampires, who's getting vampires? Uh, we're going to see. Two mana cost, howl. Draw a creature with strength greater than its health. If it has mana cost three or less, repeat once. Draw a creature with strength greater than its health. If it has mana cost three or less, repeat once. Mm. So it looks like an aggro card. You can get profane ritualist. You can get you can gain Argus. You can gain false acolyte. Not great. Lighted anomalies. Okay. We don't really have a lot of light cards that met the condition of having greater strength and health. Um, and also being like three minor or less. I would I would say this works really well on aggro. But like reality is they even have enough aggro tools. Like, do they even have enough aggro tools? Let's just go. Shine tribe type creature. So like you cannot get any of these. You're not getting any of these. You can get eliminated warrior, but you're not like super excited about getting this one, even if it's like on, on a discount. Uh, you can get Battlement, you can get Devoted Follower, you can get Exalted Hermit, which I love running my Exalted Hermits, not gonna lie. Um, I mean, the effect is really good. The effect's actually really, really good. It's a really good way to draw cards, but like, look at this. Are, are we really building a deck if we can consistently proc that card? I don't think so. I think if we if we build a deck that consistently procs, it's probably gonna be a trash deck because most of the cards that have greater strength than HP, they are usually useless or not that not as good, right? So on that sense, I think Howl is not that good. Uh let's just put it on B tier for the time being, and we're gonna a C tier for the time being, we're gonna move it depending on what we look at. Uh, at the start of your okay, it's a two mana cost turn serpent. At the start of your turn, transform into a four three werewolf and gain blitz. Two mana one five. Actually, low key really good. I do like this card a lot because people can really trade into it, and you're playing a two mana for a you're playing two mana for a four three. It's really hard to deal with a five HP minion. It's possible. It's a card that you would not love playing if you were playing behind, but still. It's like a 2 mana cost, healing you for 5 HP, even if it gets traded. And it's, it is at least 5 HP, right? Because sometimes they won't have like the exact damage. So, uh, if they do decide to trade, then they need to kill it. And if not, you get a 2 mana 4-3 Blitz minion. Which is like really good. So I'd say this card's really nice um oh low key really good yeah turn servant just a basic really decent good card nothing crazy about it it's just it's a two mana one five which is decent it's hard to clear and i like that so i'm gonna say good i'm gonna say it's eight tier maybe on front of the b tiers like maybe here or a tier consistently right there I don't really know which deck will love this. Maybe if Control Light gets a team, like gets played. Uh, I could see having Tempo being really nice. I'm going to put it there, maybe. Full Moon Fervor. Give plus one plus one to all friendly one mana cost creatures. If their strength is greater than their health, also give them protected. Oh, wow. I mean... <sighs> How do I feel about Full Moon Fervor, man? Again, the only issue is most of the minions that have higher strength 
that HP is there and not that good. And then you have to run specifically one mana cost. So we can actually look this one out. Thing is, how am I making that happen? How am I like illuminated water? Bro, literally that's it. Literally that's it. I mean You can trade then buff? Ah, it's complicated, right? Because you need to value trades with one mana cost minions. Possessive 2p, time to shine. Wait, possessive 2p minus one. Oh, wait, this actually got it. The werewolves are one mana as well. Oh, okay. Werewolves being one mana as well makes sense. You can, this is the time you start buying all of the militant extortionists because they're gonna pop up. 3 1 3 1. Okay, I guess Leviathan Hunter is a neutral card as well. I kind of like that. I mean, maybe, 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 maybe Sentinel Princess. Not really, though. I could see a deck trying to make this work. Veteran Hoplite works really well as well. It's a 1-mana, 2-1, and it has a lot of up, up potential because you can heal this one back to full HP. Uh, Valkyrie Heartstorm also makes sense. Uh, Bangrax Woman can trade and then, you know, get, get the buff. Still, I could see a deck fully focusing on playing something like Full Moon Fervor. But I'm not super excited about it. I think most of the high strength, low HP minions that cost 1 mana can be really weak. Now, depending on how often we're going to see more werewolves into the meta, like more cards supporting this specific archetype, this might get up a little bit. But for the time being, if I don't see anything super crazy going on it, I'm going to say this is like a C tier for me. Something alongside Just Beneath Shadow, Tower of Dread. And we're going to keep looking at it. I think Sacrificial Chalice goes even lower for me. I think this one might be on here. Remember the cards are order. Like from left to right on how I feel they are better. I think Pain Stalker might almost be an A tier. And I think Sacrificial Chalice might almost, might almost be a C tier. I think this card might almost be a B tier. And it goes that way, okay? Uh, let's take a look at the next one. Back Priest, 3 mana cost, protected. Look at the creatures in your deck. Choose one, make it the chosen one, give it plus 2, plus 2. Then shuffle your deck. It's a 3 mana, 2, 3 protected. Um, yeah, overall, quite consistent. Uh, good stats. The protected is nice. You give plus two plus two to a minion in your deck and you get to pick it. You get to pick the chosen one though. Picking the chosen one is good. That's the first thing. Picking the chosen one is a good thing. Second thing, it has good stats for the prize. Um, you can compare these to an Audi or a Raid Reveler. Overall, just a good card. I don't really see on which deck this would absolutely shine like in create like crazy but i'm gonna say this is a tier for me maybe strong b tier i would say also the most underwhelming a tier but just a really really solid overall card you don't know when you're gonna draw the chosen but being able to select the chosen one is actually not and i'm pretty sure there's gonna be a deck that's gonna be super happy about having this new interaction so I will say this card has crazy potential and by itself it's pretty solid three mana two three protected hell yeah i'll play that it has space to be buffed by asterius because he has two attacks so it can be buffed by other cards it can also be buffed by the uh the gp the ascended gp from light so i'm gonna say this one can be really nice it's gonna be an A tier for me, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be some form of combo deck or some form of chosen one setup that is gonna be thinking, oh my god, this is great. This is exactly what we needed. So it's gonna be A tier, and I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being an S tier in the future when someone finds a deck that can explode the effect of this card.
Uh, we're gonna go to the next one. Levicus Lupine Preacher. Well, this is you on YouTube. I will upload this in you on YouTube. Um, Levicus Lupine Preacher, four mana, protected. After a weaker friendly creature is immun, transform it into a 4-3 werewolf and gain three favor. I mean, it's a four mana 4-3. You have to immediately clear this guy. No questions asked. Now, how often are you going to be summoning cards? Because summon is not play. It's not... Does, is, is summon play? I think it actually might be. Summon is playing, right? Yeah, so every time you play a weak minion... Yeah, every time you play a weak minion, you get a 4-3 werewolf and gain three favor. Um, it, It's nice. It's a really strong card. You have to clear it immediately. And it has protected, so it's not the easiest card to play. But the thing about this card is, I would have loved for this to be 3 mana instead of 4. Mainly because at 4 mana, you're having so many issues following it up. Like, at most, you're going to play this for 4 mana. You're going to play a 1 mana cost card. And then you're going to make it like an, a, another werewolf. And you're going to be happy because you got favor. So, like, the I think the typical play is going to be play Levicus at 5 and transform a minion immediately. And uh, I guess you're kind of happy about it. It's like a strong turn 5 play. But it's not like insanely broken. Like it's good. I will play this, and I think it's quite consistent. But I don't see it being like incredibly broken right now. I guess like you can always go for Levicus Lupine Preacher, and then and then play any of the one drops that gives you more than one card. Like uh, you can play these alongside. You can play these alongside Guard Shard. You can play these alongside Dead Bodyguard and get like two two big werewolves immediately for five mana. And it wouldn't be crazy hard for an aggro light deck to run either Dead Bodyguard or Guard Shard. Some of the light decks already do because they want to go wide with their big buffs, right? So I think Levicus might see some value on, on, on getting to five mana and playing it alongside other cards. And then if you ever get this and you get to play full moon forever with the other werewolves, maybe we're going to be cooking something. I don't think myself it's going to be like insanely, insanely, insanely broken, but it seems to be like a pretty solid all around card. I wouldn't be mad about playing this on any of my decks, just like I would, wouldn't bother playing Audi on a control war deck because Audi is a 3 mana 3 to protect it. Hard to get rid of, gives you a discount. I think Levicus is kind of on the same spot. Oh, this is a little bit more versatile, but this one is pretty strong by itself. So I'm going to say it's A tier, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a aggro light deck that is going to benefit from this pretty, pretty crazily. So yeah, I'm going to say A tier. I think Back Priest is better. I think it has more upside, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be thinking, Aldous, there's not enough chosen decks being played. Nobody really focuses on this mechanic. I think this is really good. I actually think this is going to be kind of naughty. So uh, I'm gonna leave it this or on this order. I think it's good, but it's not crazy good. Uh, but yeah, definitely gonna see some play for sure. Back prayers, five mana cost. Summon three one mana creatures from the top of your deck. I mean, surely you are. Okay. It's too expensive though. It's too expensive, and if you summon, do you get the roars to happen. Probably no. So like, mm, I mean, there's not much going on with this card. It's just a five mana summon three cards, and they are all one mana cost. Again, do you really want to do that? Like, if you have Levicus on the board and then you play Back Prayer, you're like, hell yeah, I did it. Wait a minute. What happens if you play Levicus and then you play like Best Speed Light? <laughs> there isn't enough board space for that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't think Pack Prayer is anything too crazy. They transform before they summon another Best Speed. Is my guess. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So this wouldn't really work with Best Speed, anyways. And this one is a little bit too slow. I'm going to say Back Prayer is probably a C tier. 
card for me uh there's not much going on about it it's just a little bit slow i think levicus and pack player like what am i doing playing freaking necronomics and playing them together it's too expensive and levicus is just one of those cards on which you have to kill your opponent needs to have a way to kill it and they will kill it you know this guy is not gonna stay on the board for too long it's like it doesn't matter what they're gonna remove it and if you want to get value from Levicus, you probably spent a pip to play it on three mana instead of four when it's harder to kill which means you won't be able to play back prayer and you know those small details i think they essentially they add up and make this card a little bit more useless even if you get to play Levicus. um that's what i was thinking using that wearable but for deeper don't realize that would counter act themselves and four is too expensive yeah it's just a little bit expensive i'm gonna put it on c tier i think it makes it's a nice home for the car right there and we're gonna move on to the next one we're gonna go to magic um oof, magic always gets the best cards at the beginning and then some of them get nerfed and then they get absolutely nerfed and they just get nerfed again we're gonna go through them with really high hopes uh soaring's tome um two mana cost so one a three one opus anima for your opponent it's a two mana cost card that summons a three mana a, a three one minion for my opponent from this point it doesn't look that good let's look at the card um opus anima uh afterlife deal two damage to all friendly creatures oh It's a good looking board. I mean, a good looking book. You need follow up. The thing is, you will, if you play this, you need to follow up to kill it. So I guess like Sovereign Storm and then Mage Bolt Afterlife. Yeah, I mean, you. it's essentially four mana, the old 2 to all. In a way, it is. If you are sitting on a Shadow Scryer, you can actually do it for cheaper. If you're seeing like on a final draft, you can do it for cheaper. Mm. Also, here's here is the thing. If you proc your opponent's afterlife, it goes through ward. And it's a creature can also be attacked. Yeah, so you can trade into this and it goes through ward because uh since the afterlife is from your opponents it's still it, it then it doesn't matter and you can kill ward with minions so it's a nice way to go through ward and the reality is who plays wards the only class that plays ward consistently is agrolyte that's the only one so this would be really annoying against agrolyte because you get to get rid of the annoying minions for cheap um I mean, it's good in that sense. It's a solid clear. I think this card might be useful. I like it. Um, it's a two mana cost. You do need a setup though. But I guess worst case scenario is you need Mage Bolt setup, which is nothing, nothing too bad. With Were Rat. I guess with Were Rat could be really cool as well. I'm gonna say this card is high B tier or maybe A tier because I could see it being pretty useful, but I also don't think it's gonna be like game breaking. I'm gonna put it on high B tier for the time being and I need to think more about it because again, doesn't care about combos. Combos don't really play minions that often, Relic Slayer. Um, dealing two damage is a little bit underwhelming and if you're into the mid late game right if you're early game you will need to play mage Ball, and at that point you could just play farlight gauge you could play tracking ball or like crystal rain it's, it, it gets a little bit cheaper uh it, it's better it's better than crystal rain and some people still run crystal rain sometimes so i'm gonna say it's probably a tier because it is pretty versatile this card is a prime fire glide indeed yeah i'm gonna say it's a prime fire glide indeed so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it on there it doesn't work well with spell boost because you're not getting the benefit from spell boost, which is hmm, so so. 
Also, if your opponent has a full board, they can play around it by not summoning a 3-1 for my opponent because a full board will counter this. Um, mm -mm -mm. What else? Four mana crystal rain goes to ward and offset. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, yeah, just just eight tier. That's enough. You're right. Um, let's go to the next one. A depth of immortality, three mana. Roar, add a base copy of the last spell you play to your hand. At the end of the turn, obliterate it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, this one is nasty, man. Oh my, this one is so good. I love this card. You know, there's something about cards like Pyrrhic Knowledge that just make me get so hyped. You know, where, where you get so much versatility and whatever you're playing and whatever you're building around, just having the tools. And this is the type of card that makes turns interesting. Cards like this one makes it so there's not always a play to go through, but there's more than one. And I think this card is going to work perfectly. Like, let, let's, let's say you play... Let's say you play what you play. You play Demetrius. You have you have the two mana cost spell. You play it. You play a Death of Immortality. Let's say you have the one mana cost. You play it. You play it again. You draw two cards. That's pretty solid. Um, let's say you need Pyrrhic Knowledge. Let's say you have Pyrrhic Knowledge discounted. You can play it twice. Uh, let's say you have. I mean, three mana is gonna be a little bit expensive to play any card twice, though. Yeah, yeah, you need a lot of mana for it to happen, though. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. You don't get the reduced card, but it's fine. Even if you don't get the reduced card, it's like, okay, right? It's like pretty solid anyways. Uh, because, okay, this could arguably just be a tempo card. Let's play, let's say you're playing CDM. If you're playing CDM, just having ancient text, ancient text, three mana, three, is like voted because... Let's not even look at the roar. It's a three mana three three. It's actually pretty damn good. I'm gonna say this card is at least a tier with the potential of being S tier, uh, because it's just pretty versatile. I can think about so many ways getting value out of this minion. Uh, just because at some point Mage is pretty good at discounting cards. So if you ever discount a card and then you play it and you get to float the mana again, you're going to get for some really good tempo swings while playing Adept of Immortality. And I love that. I actually really enjoy it. So I think this is going to be really good. I think this might be better than Turn Servant. I think this might be better than Servilia. I think this is actually pretty nice. Um, and I don't think it goes into the br incredibly broken territory, but I think it might almost be there. So I'm going to say it is really good for me. Else is too slow, impossible to use. I'm going to say this is just an insanely solid CDM card. I, I think I think it's just going to be insanely solid. Like for me, I'm a player that truly enjoys playing, uh, you know, Warp Engineers on my deck. You know, you can play you can play Corallis and then you get a rune and then and then you play your rune of strength into your shadow scry or you play the depth of immortality and you drop a second rune of strength you you know there's gonna be ways to get value out of it it's gonna be a little bit annoying because it's a little bit expensive to fully develop the card you just played but i think it's gonna be playable and i think it's gonna work so i'm gonna say this card is just a versatile three mana cost that is gonna work and it's gonna do wonders for fast aggressive mage decks and i like that um Gideon Insurgent Prodigy, three mana cost. Uh, Roar, draw a card. If your if your hand is full, shuffle a one mana cost copy of each spell in your hand into your deck. Draw a card. If your hand is full, shuffle a one mana cost copy of each spell in your hand into your deck. What the fuck is going on with this card? So. I mean, with this card, you obviously have a goal. You want your hand to be filled. And if your hand is filled and then you play this guy, you're going to shuffle your entire hand into your deck. 
and then it's gonna be one mana cost for each one. Mm. Too hard to feel hand? Is it really though? No, the card you draw just has to be the nine card. Absolutely true. Anti fatigue. Well, the thing is, usually you don't reach the anti fatigue point by having a full hand. Usually, if you're at that point, you're like going all out, playing clears, just trying to stay alive. Because something people don't realize is when you get to nine mana, eight mana, or end game, end game turns, unless you're playing board wipe vet, um, most of the people have to spend a lot of resources to stay alive. So it's not that easy. Uh, three mana, two, three, draw enough for a good card. Three mana, two, three, draw one. Yeah, I guess I guess this card has a lot of potential. I think I think it has a lot of potential, and I could see it being useful. I can actually see it at some point. You know, actually getting a full hand and, and getting all of the cards on there. If there's a domain, if there's a god that has the potential of getting a full hand, it has to be mage. Um, I don't think it's broken. I will say, I don't think the card's broken. I think if you're ever playing like a CDM deck, this could be really nice. Um... Mm -mm 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 I'm gonna say this is good. Then you have to draw the one mana spells though, it's too much setup. I'm gonna say this card is playable. I'm gonna put it on high B tier because it's just another good draw mechanic. I can't really theory craft a way to make it consistent as a win condition, but it could potentially be a win condition by itself. Um, so I'm gonna say this is nice. I'm gonna say this is actually nice. Uh, I, I think it's playable. Any draw for magic is at least good. Yeah, it is good. I think B tier is, is high B tier makes, makes, you know, makes it work. So I'm going to put it right on there. And I have, I, I have a good feeling about this card. I think it might be playable on the right deck. And I think we're going to see, I'm, I think we're actually going to see it on play. Right now I can't think of a way, but I, I think we will do so. We're gonna move on to the next one. Four mana, Rhinos, Rhinos Wisdom. Deal damage to a creature equal to your hand size. Uncover Eldritch Mystery. Hand size. I mean. Again, like having a big hand size is good. Um, I was always told size doesn't matter, but Gio is trying to teach me otherwise. I mean, I think the card is decent. I wonder if the damage happens after you uncover the Eldritch Mystery or it happens after. The thing is, Mage indeed has a lot of ways to draw, but if you are drawing, you're, you're, you're losing the board. And there's always some, some flexing point on which you say enough is enough. It's time to throw my hand in order to stay alive. And that's the moment when you see like mage players drawing, 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 drawing. And then you see Lay Horde, Lay Horde, Ancient Text, Tracking Bolt, and then End Turn. And suddenly from going from having like eight cards, now they have like five or four. And they have to go through the drawing process again, but they have those big swingy turns. And the thing is, if you're like early on the game, you don't want to play Gideon at that point. You want to move on from that first flexing point on which you play your hand to stay alive and gain tempo and do it later into the match so i guess it gets a little bit easier after the first flexing point so gideon is never a card you want to keep on your mulligan on that sense and cards that are usually like you don't want to keep on the mulligan they are not that great um i mean like i guess hortug you never want to keep on mulligan but some people will do so i remember clutch keeping a hortug on a mulligan and winning a tournament because of that. And I also remember a really big Hearthstone tournament in which they ended up keeping their win conditions. I would never think myself keeping Gideon because it's just not as a it's not as good as a Hortuk or something like that. So 
I think Gideon is solid B tier at this point. I think Ruinous Wisdom has potential to be a good played card, but like capping at eight damage, let's say eight. I don't think you're ever gonna be playing this at nine consistently. Even seven looks a little bit weird. And most of the times you wanna play Lehort before you develop this one. Uh, I'm gonna say it's another B tier. I think it has potential, but I'm not super in love with it. I think Mysteries got got a big nerf as well. Maybe there's a mystery deck that will definitely benefit from this. But I'm not super loving it. I'm gonna give it a B tier. And I'm gonna put it just above poison uh Gorn berries. Is there some kind of draw deck you can make with Wisdom and Gibson? I mean, there is. But if Wisdom could have gone face, I would say good card. Plus, it's only used to clear minions, and there are right now so many matchups where you don't really need that much damage, right? There's a lot of minions that you just actually want to proc the protected and then deal for damage or something like that. And for 4 mana, this is a little bit expensive. So it cannot target hidden. A lot of the decks right now don't really care about having big stats on board. So like, do you really care about having a, a, a 4, deal 7, deal 8? It's not even that interesting. So yes, you're getting an Eldritch Mystery, so I guess that's the upper side compared to the other cards but then you do have a setup you need to you, you need to accommodate to, to in order to make it work so i'm gonna say it's meh i think this could have been three mana and i would rate it like eight tier but at four mana it's a little bit expensive for the effect uh we're gonna go to the next ones illicit summons six mana pretty cool art i don't know what the fuck is going on but i like it summon a random magic creature with mana cost equal to your hand size I feel like this is too risky, but in order to make an accurate reading on this card, let's just go, let's just go through it. So it's like magic. And of course, the bigger the better, right? So let's take a look at nine mana cost cards. Let's say you have no wait, how do you even get this at nine mana? It's impossible. So eight is the best. Um hello? Oh yeah. So let's go, you go to eight. You get a send the stroller here. You're you feel like you made such a big setup to get this and you feel a little bit disappointed you get this and you're feeling okay you feel like life wonders matters again uh two five insane uh you get Frey and you feel disappointed uh you get thome golem and these are roars you get an eight mana eight eight you spend six mana to get there and you have eight cards in your hand so you probably could have done something different on that turn but instead i mean nine but instead you went for this minion you feel disappointed and then you get Prodigy's Pet. At the end of your turn, give your God Protector and Ward after your God loses Protector and Ward. Give your God Protector a Ward. Okay, this guy is really interesting. I guess you would be happy about getting this guy, this guy, and maybe this guy. And then these two are underwhelming. And the turn was actually pretty tough to get there. So, um, not too hot. Let's see the seven mana costs. Maybe seven is the, the sweet, sweet point for this card. Gigamonte, yeah, kind of bad. Uh, well, we know these ones because there's a card that consistently gives you seven mana cost cards. And I would be lying to tell you if I told you I get so disappointed by my seven mana cost drops so often. I'm always waiting, hoping I'm gonna get Plant or Centurion, and I never do. And I lose my game right at that turn. So I will say, uh, Illicit Summons seems to be pretty underwhelming because. At some point, I could have just played a 6 mana, right? Like, I don't have to have 6 cards to play a 6 mana cost minion. So, I could have just played a 6 mana, and then if 7 and 8 are so underwhelming, then what's the point of playing a card like this one? None, right? It's just trash. So, I will say it is the summon for me. It's still okay to set up outer magic from mystery. I guess setting up after a magic from mystery could make some sense. But yet again, I'm just I'm just not feeling it. I'm gonna give I'm I'm gonna give it a C tier. Uh if mysteries try to make a comeback into the game, maybe they maybe they will do so. Maybe they can do it well. But for me, I'm not in love with this. I think the setup is hard. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's above back prayer, but that's the most love I can give it. I'm gonna put it here. Uh we're gonna move on to the next one. 
Prodigy's pet, 8 mana cost, at the end of the turn, give your god protected and ward. After your god loses protected and or ward, give your god protector and ward again. So, this card's kind of crazy, right? Isn't this like really good? Because, I mean, you can potentially die. This guy makes you immortal, literally. Because... If you lose, like, let's say you're playing against Dreads and you're afraid of dying from Dreads, you could literally draw all the Dreads, they proc the Ward or the Protected, and then you get it again. And then you draw another one and you get it again. And then you work a gun one and you get it again. Interesting how it works with Mayday. I mean, it should be like Mayday hits and then you get it again. Mayday hits and then you get it again. Mayday hits and then you get it again. Um, Because it's one damage, one damage, one damage. So. This card makes you immortal on a way. Now, he could die. You can't kill this minion. He's an 8 mana, 8 10. Shouldn't be that hard to get rid of. And I wonder if this is actually worth it. Like, essentially, this minion has frontline. Reality is, it's an 8 mana, 8 10. Gives you ward protected and has frontline. That's how I would read it. And that's pretty good. 8 mana, 8, 10, frontline, give your god protected ward. Dreads won't pop your ward, but it, they will pop the protected. And it's either of them being popped, then you get it again. So even if it doesn't pop it, you get it again anyways, because they will pop protected. So it's fine. Um, if you're playing Mage Mirror and someone plays this against me on a Mage Mirror matchup, I'm, I'm devastated. If I'm playing a Randion and, and someone gets it, now I have to kill this guy first and then I have to go like remove the ward, remove protected, and then aim to kill my opponent. So this is annoying to face in specific matchups, but it's nothing too crazy. I could see just, I mean, also if you're playing against Bomb Dragons or any, if you're playing against Bomb Dragons or any like, uh, you know, dead deck that is doing damage to your face, this is going to be really annoying. To, to deal with unbound useless already uh nah both right or am i really no no yeah yeah it after you got loses protector or ward so any of those that you lose you gain both again so it doesn't matter yeah yeah, yeah. so you can it can be or and you're gonna get it anyways so essentially immortality but you have to like they're just gonna kill the guy and that's it he doesn't have protected or ward but it's an eight mana heal for 10 and get protected and ward and that's like low-key really good but at the same time i'm thinking i mean i could just play a winter's bounty for six mana and have the same effect and maybe even better like winter's bounty just it's a much better card than this on a way and i think they do the same thing you high roll this on 6 and you win easy. Oh, I elicit summons into my 9 hand and then prodigy and get prodigy's pet. Surely I'll surely I will do that, right? And if and if I'm playing against control deception, do I even care? They probably just gonna stone skin the guy, let me get protected in ward, and then just keep on playing for a while. This are Randy. Nah, like you don't even win, I think. I guess it's really good against some some archetypes, but how are you even getting there? Enough is enough. Um Prodigy is pet. It's enough of a prodigy to be on a low I'm gonna say mid B tier. I'm gonna put it above Countess de Lapore. Because I could see this being annoying on some matchups. Actually I'm gonna put it just above Radius Wisdom. Let's get the two mage cards that kind of have the same art style together and let them vibe together and be friends together. But that's all from mage. A little bit underwhelming. I mean, I guess we do get Adept of Immortality. It's the card that I'm the most hyped about. Everything else is kind of mid tier for me. Nothing too crazy. I guess we also got Sovereign Stone, which can be pretty nice. And uh, let's move on. We're gonna move on to nature. Oh my god. I, I really hope nature is gonna be bad, man. I don't wanna see nature getting any more love. Two mana afterlife, add a mutation to your hand, two mana three two wild. Okay, this is already decent. Nothing crazy about this card. Mutations are pretty flexible. 
it's not really something you want to be playing around completely uh but it's something you can always flex and you can always get on there get you out of trouble make something out of it it's crazy it's rng it's lovely it's a two mana three two it has the wild tag as well it might not be too much but it's honest work nature already getting a pretty decent card from the start just a straightforward just a straightforward playable card i might even put it above the legendary from mage and uh, let's move on to the next one way of the dreadwood two mana cost a spell big two Give a friendly wild ward, obliterate up to three cards from your opponent's void. Give a friendly wild plus one plus one. It attacks target enemy creature. Well, you can give ward to a minion, but it has to be wild. You can obliterate cards from your opponent's void, so it's flexible. It's good against afterlives. It is versatile. And then you give a wild plus one plus one, and it can also attack a target enemy creature, which is really nice. Two mana for three void is really good. Yeah, and also you can give blitz to a minion, which is Loki really good. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. The thing is, this card with something like that, which feeds us, you know, this card with any buff minion, this card with any overkill minion. This card with like anything on the board that is gonna help you stay alive, survive, and trade is really good. And then something that nature is pretty good at is having good base stats. The issue is they are confused, so you don't get to pick when do they go the place you want them to go. With this card, it doesn't even matter because confuse won't change anything. You can just get the trade you want and also get some void hate or buff the card or give it ward. So like Loki, I'm gonna say Breaststall card. I wouldn't mind running one copy of this on any of my nature decks, and I maybe do so. But on the other side of things, I don't think it's incredibly broken. I'm gonna say I am more excited to play these than I'm about to play Bosses, Flesh, or even Grave Equality. Although a Grave Equality can have some really high upswings, I'm gonna put it on B. It's a good card, it's interesting. But yet again, I mean, I'm not, you know, not rotting my brain to play this. Black Briar Whip, three mana cost, two three Godlets. After you attack with this relic, summon a one one Amazon recruit. Uh, it's a card with Godlets. Godlets is pretty good on any game. Uh, historically, if you look at Hearthstone, all of the relics have Godlets. Hearthstone is a game on which, if you're playing a relic, it immediately has Godlets. No questions asked. So, um. It give you a 1-1 one, one token as well. So you get to clear a minion, you get a 1-1. One, one, um, and it's an Amazon tag, so it's actually really nice. I will say this card's pretty good. Nothing crazy about it. it the concept's really straightforward. This is fully tempo, and I truly enjoy tempo cards. You know me. I'm a sucker for tempo cards. I love them. I truly enjoy them. I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put it on the A tier. But yet again, I'm not going to put it above any of the other A tiers. I think potentially this could be right order. I think this guy doesn't have what it's needed to be there. I also think Sevilla could be a little bit lower. And um, I think this is the way I like cards right now. It's just a great addition, just a great tempo card, just great value. This is exactly what the card is. It is what it shows, it is what it's offered. It's just great value, and I take great value quite often. I'm playing Parks Control Markers on my deck because they're just good studded minions. So I would absolutely play Black Briar Whip, and I like the Godlets. Maybe Amazon, sometimes they are short 1 damage, 2 damage, 3 damage. Maybe this will be enough to make for that uh, you know, gap and just finish the game when you're so close to killing your opponent. Uh, we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, bristling pixie three mana cost roar summon a bristling pixie ally deal one damage to a random enemy character so it's random it's three mana but she summons one of her owns so she summons a copy it's a three mana one to amazon and again amazon getting more love more support and i'm down for that again something the pattern we are realizing on this um expansion is aggro is receiving a lot of love Agro is receiving all of the new cards, all of the additions, and Control is like getting a few splashes on there, like maybe one or two cards. And I think that's okay, because everything on the game follows a pattern. 
first we get aggro we got combo then we get aggro and then we have control or not control but tempo so at some point i'm guessing for the next expansion what we're going to be looking at is some tempo cards tempo is it the king when it comes down to the fitting control because you're going to get value and you're going to get traits and you're going to get stuff like that i mean this is tempo but what i mean with tempo is like you know good strong five six seven mana cost minions that will make it so you know facing these super fast aggressive cards so i think right now g is pushing aggro over anything else and i think that's fair to see because combo is obnoxiously annoying and i would rather never face combo again so i'm down for this to happen and i think bristling pixie might be good just you know ally tag it's okay it's a cheap it's a really cheap minion and if you play bristling pixie and then you attack with black briar whip you're getting two damage from random cards you get to trade you get more amazons on the board and if you follow it up with a buff it can be really nice also these alongside with the card that gains plus plus x or y hp or strength for every amazon on the board and stuff like that you know you're gonna get some interesting mechanics overall really good also this one is like i believe the first br bristling pixie will get triggered by the second bristling pixie which is already pretty good so i i mean and then you have the legendary synergy so if you ever get this, the the legendary card on there she's gonna be doing like three four damage per per card played and yeah overall decent decent card uh you still need a setup you still need to be playing amazons you need to marry to one specific archetype and maybe this is the support amazon has been needing all this time so for having that in mind i'm gonna give it a low a tier um i'm gonna put it right here i think it's pretty solid maybe 2 hp is a little bit too low hp for my taste you die to sovereign stone you die to Farlight gauge uh, there's gonna be a lot of ways to deal with these for cheap um like shape plus and stuff so for the time being it's gonna be right on there but i think this card has a lot of potential i can't really tell if amazon is gonna be the most broken archetype but i'm happy to see nature receiving love on the form of something that is not fully board controlling because you often see Am i mean nature just oh look they just got another insanely controlled card no this time we get some love for the Amazon setup, and I think that's exactly what we needed. Agro is getting love, it's fine. We're gonna adapt, and mid range is still gonna be a powerhouse if Agro gets a strong position into the meta, which I like. Uh, let's go to the next one Narcia the Huntress for mana. Uh, roar deal one damage. If this destroys the target exactly, increase this damage by one and repeat this roar uh that's so interesting that's so interesting that's so interesting i like it a lot i truly like narcisia a lot it's one of those cards that we haven't seen on gu that there's a lot of them on hearthstone um like the cards that deal one damage to every minion on the board if you kill a minion repeat and do it again and do it again and do it again it's just one of those cards that makes mad fun it's just one of those cards that makes planning worth it it's just one of those cards that makes me happy because you get to play your own objectives and you get to play and you get to do like i'm gonna deal one damage to this minion and i'm gonna trade these and and you get some interesting setups and this is the type of cards that gets people looking at what happened and thinking wow this guy is pretty good um and the best thing is something that narcilla is gonna do for you is you can target your own minions so the ways you're gonna be able to play with narcilla and make some crazy clears is gonna be pretty nasty the bad thing is again narcilla can target phase yeah it can target phase so you can go for like clear five minions in a pretty different unique way even clear your own minions to keep the damage going up and then finish it with going face or deal with a really strong minion or you know something unique like that so sadly sadly for us is that i think our cj is a control card although she's an amazon i guess she could be played on every single deck 
uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to her. She can actually be played on every day because at the end of the day, even if you're playing Amazons, you will have to fight for the board, and she's gonna do a good job doing so. So yeah, I think she's pretty useful. I think she's gonna be good. I think she's really versatile. I don't know if she's S tier, but for me, she is kinda on the S tier range. But for the time being, I'm gonna put her right beneath the uh, Adept of Immortality. Actually, I'm gonna put her right on the top of the A tier range. I think I think she might be one of the strongest A tier cards we have seen so far because she is pretty flexible and she is just a four mana three four stat wise. She's also the Amazon. She also has the Amazon tag, so I think she can be played quite nicely. Also, these deal one damage. If I'm not wrong, it might actually even work with some of the other Amazon passives. So like. And then you get to deal one damage with bristling pixies or any of the other amazons adding value to the ally target so you're gonna be able to get a, get some crazy clears even if you're falling behind on the board quite by quite a lot um but yeah i think she's gonna be good it's not s tier because four mana is still a little bit expensive you're it's gonna be a little bit troublesome to get her to play but it's gonna be okay uh, four mana, four six with splits, frontline potential for more. You you don't think it's strong? Um, I mean, this is this is this is crazy card. I mean, I think this is the most busted, busted card we have seen today, but it's fine. Uh, nine mana, pad of crumbs, big three, deal five damage. Um, to two enemy creatures, draw three cards, summon two five five overgrown rhinos, heal character for five. The strongest, <laughs> the strongest friendly creature attacks the weakest enemy creature. So you get to pick three. Uh, let's say you summon. If you don't know what this card is, let me bring you back to the Hearthstone memory tree. Uh, infested. Ultimate infestation, I think it's called. Ultimate infestation um ultimate infestation deal five damage draw five cards gain five armors one of five five goal when this card was first printed on gotten chain i mean on hearthstone people were thinking this was gonna be bad and it was not bad it was actually a great 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 end game card and a great way to refill your hand fight for the board get something on the board heal yourself just a little bit of everything and that's kind of the vibe i'm getting for part of crumbs uh this is going, this to, is become going to become buff with salad with this amazon crap divya it's gonna the be deadly serenade at all the school amazon has a lot of things going on there wait did the tts sound we actually heard the tts it should have worked it didn't right well we're gonna keep on going so we're gonna pick three we get these. That sounded weird. Oh no. Is TTS broken? We'll see. So like it's exactly that, right? You're exactly getting the same effects. Except for you get two less cards. You don't armor doesn't exist on you, so you get to kill. You get the fire damage. So you're getting one, two, three, four. The big the difference is we are getting only three effects, and then you don't get armor, you get heal. But I guess this card's a little bit more versatile. Mm. It's definitely an ultimate infestation thing because ultimate infestation is also just a druid card and on here is a nature card, which is basically the same. Are all nine mana cards trash because of combo decks? If this was a little bit better, I would say it is playable. But yeah, mutation abuse incoming. The thing is, I I'll be honest with you. This is not an who said a, just a hollow form nerf. Why would you say hollow form nerf? That does that even make sense, right? No, it doesn't, right? Because if I'm not wrong, isn't hollow form eight mana? I right, fucked up. Give me a second. Drive, mana, shine, set, rarity, god type, spell. Yeah, holoform is 8. So, this is actually, I will say, probably a buff 
to holo farm because before you were stuck on holo farm and you wouldn't be able to do something else and sometimes holo farm will get stuck in your hand and now i know that sounds crazy i was how are you not capable of playing holo farm well it took you long enough to get holo farm there first thing second you're probably running out of cards because you play a lot of mutations you have been trying to stay alive so yes you can just play holo farm and be happy about it or keep it in your hand but sometimes sometimes what you want is deal five damage to two enemy creatures which is great draw three cards and some one ten ten stats Sometimes this is all you want. On this side of things, this might be better. This is definitely a card for mutations, and I'll tell you so why. It's because Hearthstone gets to 10 mana on 10 turns. On GU, you get to 9 mana on 4, 3, 3, and then 2. So it's 4, 4, 4, 8, and then oh, it's 4, 3, 3. 4, 3, 3, 2. So it's 10, 12, and then plus 5. You get to these mana on 15 turns. Something like that. I don't know. It's too hard. Mad is hard for Geo players. But you're going to wait 15 turns for this. You're going to wait 10 turns for this. Um, or you can just play it on hollow. You can just play out of hollows or, or uh, not hollows, but mutations. And then you get 10 damage, draw 3, 10, 10 stats. And that's actually really solid. That's actually really, really, really annoying. And matter is, uh, sometimes you don't want to play a holo. Sometimes you don't have minions to follow it up. Sometimes the holo is not the best play. Sometimes you might actually want Pot of Crumbs. And in that sense, what this card is essentially doing is giving the holo versatility to become something else. And sometimes that's exactly what you need. Sometimes it will also be annoying because you would be thinking, oh, I wish I can mutate again and not get rid of my holo. Such is life. I think it's overall a card that might see some play and people will be happy about, you know, having on their options. Now, do I think people will play this on their deck? Actually, no. I think almost nobody will be playing this on their deck. And that's why I'm going to give it a D tier. Because, or you can plan now trying to get Hollow and Crumbs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can just plan it out. But the thing is, this is not a card you run on your deck. You might see it being played, you're not going to see it being put into the deck. Because it's pointless. This is not a card you want to be running. It's an interesting effect. Yeah, it is. But reality is, you get to 9 mana, the game's already over. You want to have this happen some other way. So it's a D tier, not because it's not going to see play, but because nobody's going to put it on their deck. Uh, so I'm going to give it a D. I wouldn't really buy that card. And uh, we're going to move on to the next domain. We're almost there. We're missing war and neutral. Uh, okay, creeper. After this survives damage, draw a spell. <laughs> this card is so cool. I don't know what's wrong with you. Apparently, they do like hands. And I don't blame them for that. I also like hands. There's a gauntlet here. There's a hand here. There's a helmet here. I can see the pattern. Are we building Exodia right now? Are we actually building Exodia right now? I need to know. This is actually really good. Um, and I think this might work well with carvings. Everyone loves hand jobs. Arts are awesome. Art, art is magnificent. I think maybe this mouth is a little bit too wide. I mean, we have we have hand jobs. We have we have mouth jobs. <laughs> Uh, we have everything. This guy looks pretty cool. War has such a unique, nasty art, man. Like this looks, this looks hardcore as well, but in a in a normal way. But like these ones, I don't know. I think this one looks amazing, and I think this one is gonna see some play. I think this one is pretty decent. It works well with carvings. Um, I'm not a huge carving pursuer. I'm not 100% sure this is going to be like an insanely broken card. But I can tell you this card is most definitely going to have some play on there. Uh, it's a nether. I don't know if nether works for war. Probably doesn't. Actually, he needs to survive. If this was take damage, draw a, card, draw a spell, I would love it. But having to survive, now that I think about it, uh, I don't know. Lower B tier. I'm going to put it on high C tier. Uh, uh, such a good art, but has to survive. 
like now you're kind of forced to play with alongside brittle carving of brittle and just get another spell and be happy about that and like ugh, it's okay or you can try to buff it but trying to buff cards is usually a waste of time on gu um Creek Bear is great on card decks. Yeah, exactly what I think. But the thing is, it's tough because you need the card needs to survive. It costs of I know, but it needs to survive, right? It, that's the issue. If it would just take damage, I'll take it. You play it, get traded, you draw a card, I'm happy about the outcome. But now I play it, get traded, I get nothing, I wasted one card. I need Brittle of Carving, Carving of Brittle to make it work. Suddenly it gets lower on my rate. I was going to put it high B tier. I think now low B tier or just C tier is gonna make the uh, make the work for me. Uh, suffer carving. Wait, do we actually get another carving? Can do we get an, an official announcement? Is this a carving, guys? Is this a carving? Is this really a carving? Does it count as one? Because if it is, this might be game changing. I've always mentioned this. Carvings is like one good carvings away from freaking taking over the game so if this counts to carving and it is a good card carvings might get much higher in my tier list give a friendly creature strength equal to its missing health pull a carving with mana cost here from your boy to your hand yes it is a carving it is indeed a carving ah uh, give a friendly creature strength equal to its missing health the thing is i'm not i'm not gonna lie i think we should just get a carving that is draw one card if carvings ever gets a way to rotate cards like just one mana draw a card that's it it would be so nice three six Rika with super carving will be six six am i right um no it's equal to its missing health so you need a minion that traded or lost hp and then you play these but if you go like card like carving brittle carving into rika again and again and again and then you suffer carving at the end uh every single hp that rika lost is gonna get back into it or also if you play rika play a spell and make her trade somehow somewhere because she has protected she won't be losing as much hp um i think this card might be better on some other minions like i would say suffer carving is probably better on the actually i was gonna say the lupine dog but probably not really mm, who would be happy about i can't really think of a way of playing this card but just just the fact that it's a carving i'm gonna give it a, a decent value i'm gonna give it low b tier just because any carving that is get added into the game is gonna be good oh actually we got one two more carvings no way carvings actually gonna take away deal one damage to a friendly enemy creature pull a carving deal one damage to a friendly and enemy creature what the fuck why are carving so lame brother why can't they just make one good carving um I mean, I guess you deal damage to your enemy creature, and you deal one of them to your to your to your own minion. The thing is, we already have brittle carving, which is zero mana, which I found much better. And when you have, when you have cards like this one, that it's an end. I believe you need the first condition to happen. For the second one to be no, actually, yeah, I I believe so. So if you don't have a minion, you cannot use these to just deal one damage to an opening minion, right? It doesn't work that way. So you need to have a minion. You need to harm your minion. So okay, I think I think about this one is you have the lupine the loop guard guardian of the lupines which absolutely loves turn carving if you didn't knew this the best one of the best starts for carvings is like getting car brittle carving into the lupine bear on turn one and now you have turn carving as well to follow it up now it also makes sense that creeper is happy to have turn carving on there because they synergize well together you get to deal one damage to the creeper you get to draw another spell and you actually make this work so if who would imagine who would have guessed the glove fits the hand 
and in this case it's no different because they kind of work well together do i think it's a little bit too much maybe it is a little bit too much but they i mean they do so uh this is good when there's a binds minion on the board for the old combo decay yeah but like the requirements are just a little bit tough i'd say i mean i think again this might be playable i'm gonna give it a solid b tier um above the helmet i think it's tough draw is great for war it is indeed because they need specific cards to win the game and i think at this point war might be the fastest drawing deck on the game the only issue is the carvings a lot of the times they feel like they are absolutely useless and that's a reality but um let's keep going and we're gonna keep rating the cards on the on the time uh and dear carving three mana costs give your relic plus one durability pull a carving with mana cost two or less oh so it's just three mana give plus one durability to your relic you have to have it equipped already as well uh you know what let's just do this let's just do this let's just do this let's just do this i mean maybe this way potentially turn carving having some synergies with this but they are they are slightly underwhelming I was crying seeing these cards in my place it's raining since the announcement. I was probably about to shape his bird off and wear a dress. I mean, he could try to do so, but like he has pretty cool looking cards. Autos might not have the best mini set for them, but they definitely look pretty cool wearing all these metal rock crazy ass cards. I like them pretty lame three mana carving is too too much so slow yeah it's tough at the end of the day carvings in a way it's just thought about it's a three mana that doesn't have to have the strongest of the effects because it's a three mana draw one assuming you already played a carving and then the next card is a two mana draw one again and the next card is a one mana draw one again and just a zero mana cost card it's no draw because you don't get another one they don't have the get another carving with zero mana cost into your into your deck or hand right so if you have a three mana draw one give plus one durability to your relic it's not that bad but again the issue with drawing one is you're not really drawing one because most of the carvings are useless they don't do much unless you have a Rika on the board or a minion that benefits from playing spells. So it just makes it quite complicated. But let's keep going. Uh, Hortuk is good enough, better than this, and it's two knots. Hortuk, Ryzen, Dreadnought, four mana, frontline, leech. After D survives damage, gain one armor. Ah, there you go. So, carving of Brittle, turn carving um freaking freaking everything man okay but the issue is you can only ping him once yeah <laughs> the issue is you're gonna be able to deal him damage once and then what <laughs> like he's he's a four three hp one armor for minion I guess he still has frontline leech which is pretty solid i mean hortug is just a good card it's pretty good i could see it being much I, I think it's gonna be much better i think this card's gonna be really nice uh but so far i'm gonna give it a solid i think it's better than servila i think it might even better than the mortality i'm gonna maybe uh i think it's just a nice four mana cost front frontline leech it's a four mana with one armor just a tough minion to go through man um yeah i gotta remember where has bobs too weak i'm gonna say i'm gonna say uh, i'm gonna put her next in to, to navila i think navila is better i like her because she suits my place a little bit more i think hortuk has a lot of potential um i think this card can be really nice actually it is s definitely not s no you can put this small point to generic carving deck as a second wing con for me new hard to get c too slow it's not that it's slow it's just a four mana four four frontline leech and those keywords already make it good enough like you're saying you're getting frontline and leech 
for the expense of one hp because the average outcome of a play let's say it's a four mana for a five that's what you would expect from a normal four drop so you're paying one hp to get frontline leech and then potentially a lot of ways of gaining armor which makes it really nasty i'd say armor is way more expensive than any other any other stats because one hp is literally infinite one armor is literally infinite hp so i think the upswing for hortug is actually quite high um this the keywords makes it so for the one hp he's missing so i i think he's completely decent for four mana and i think given the cards that will su be supporting this art type i think he has a decent ace but maybe it's a little bit too high on here but i i think he's gonna fight for it i think he's gonna be um i think he's gonna be doing a good job Yes, but the end game needs turn four if your opponent can remove this clown god hand. Yeah, I I I think he's I think he's gonna have potential. I think I mean he's not S tier, but I think he's gonna make some things happen. After this takes damage, deal to damage to the opponent's god. Sorted headsman. Okay, this could actually double down as a win con for war. This could actually just be a win con for war so i think just from that instance four mana three five stats are decent nether keywords not crazy but it's okay but the effect is actually quite nice because it translates into you having the option of making so much damage thordid on the other hand that was a joke because we have a gauntlet and a creeper hand right there but absolutely yeah I, i'm down for sorted being played and um i think sorted is I think it's getting a little bit overhyped. I don't think it's better than any of these straightforward, just good tempo cards. I guess 4 3 5 stats actually really nice. It's still like a 4 mana 4 4, but you have more HP, which makes it worth it. Makes damage to your opponent's god. No, actually, he might be a really aggressive. This might be a top tier. Uh, aggro versus aggro, Hortug is going to be painful. And Sordic is going to be a good resource for aggro decks because he's probably going to do a lot of damage. He's hard to get rid of. Unbound Flames doesn't kill it. Shape Plus doesn't kill it. You will have to target him twice. Lehor doesn't kill it and it deals damage to your opponent's face. And you're doing at least four. I think this is going to be a really strong aggro card no matter what. So I'm going to put it at high A tier. If he ever gets buffed and he doesn't get deal with immediately. It's going to be super painful later into the game. So, Sordid, maybe even looking at the S tier Umbral. But, uh, yeah, I think it makes sense. Uh, better than Anubian Clown for sure. Than this guy, maybe. No way, I don't think so. Maybe we do have another S tier, actually. I just think he's going to be quite solid, not going to lie. 4 mana, 3, 5? Uh, maybe. I think the S, I think, I think, I, I think uh, Anubian Skill Master is better though. Uh, control is better than aggro if it's well built. And I think Anubian Skill Master just fits every purpose, every angle, every deck. You're, you're allowed to disagree with me, but I'm not going to change the fact that I think this is insanely strong. Um, can you this for you? Uh, okay, this 2 4 is not just enough for four mana. It's a 3 5. 3 5, and it deals 2 damage every time he receives damage. I think he's an insane outstanding way of making damage raise um maybe 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 like ah uh, let's let's leave it there yeah let's just leave it there i'll have these on my carving deck this could be played on any deck and it's gonna be good i think aggro decks will will really be happy about sorted heads man um and the best thing is it's a neutral card so they might be able to shine this one up if they find enough cards but let's keep looking. Uh, we have only one less domain, and it's the neutral domain, which is, you know, always, always chaotic to see what they're making with this one. But let's start. Uh, Gang Shade, Roar, your opponent summons a random creature from their hand, attack it, three mana, four, two. Uh too random i could see it being played but i'm not impressed with this we have a few iterations of this effect in the game and none of them are super hyped maybe could be played against combo decks like someone is interested about combo decks maybe someone is interesting about defeating like a coronet if you play this against coronet maybe it's good like the good thing is this is actually the first iteration that is played early game uh, it could also work against Siren of the Grave, could work against, you know, Ceres, Canopic, Rock Drakes, but then you're risking a few things on there. 
you can counter a few combo decks but you can also get punished by playing it it's a solid gamble i'm gonna put it on the mid b tier section because i think it might be playable at some point but it fully relies on the meta uh four mana twisted gate frontline cannot attack after your opening plays a card this takes one damage for mana for eight i mean am i crazy or this guy looks this card looks solid four mana four mana for eight every time your opening plays a card so let's say your opening plays two cards at four mana. You play these. It's a four six. Um, uh, it's okay. It's nothing too crazy. It's nothing. It's not bad either. Um, I would definitely play this card. Uh, Twisted Gate looks. Twisted Gate looks like AI on for art. Unfortunately, does it really looks like AI art? I'm not really sure. I don't really know how to tell apart AI, AI art or not. I wonder if you is using AI art. Hopefully not. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm gonna give it a solid B tier. I think it has potential, but like, I'm not super excited about it. Uh, it's a neutral card. Everybody can run it. I think there might be some structures that synergize with it. So there might be some kind of structure combo going on there on the background. I can't really think about it, but I'll I'll take a look and see what we can get. Mm, I'm I'm excited to play this myself. Uh but I don't think it's gonna be like super amazing. I'll just you play nature's main god, right? I do so. I like it. Uh Grave Channeler. 5 mana, roar, obliterate all creatures in your void. For each creature obliterated, heal your god for 1. This is interesting. Uh, you heal for every creature you obliterate. This could actually be a really nice card, specifically for aggro decks like light. Aggro light doesn't really care about having many minions on board, but they would most definitely care about having a strong healing, and this is exactly what it looks like. This could be really nice. Yeah, I'm I'm down for Grave Channeler. I think this one is gonna be cool. Cool to play. I think there's a few aggro decks, mid-range decks that will benefit from this. I'm gonna give it a jet again, another uh, maybe higher B tier section. Uh yeah, I think Sir Master, you're talking of way of the dreadwood, this one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And now the last card. Of the possibly the expansion, the most hype one, the one we're looking at every single teaser video. No, I'm looking at Rustaway. Oh yeah, Rustaway is pretty good. Um, mm, 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 mm. that the Strike Diesel Devil Guard. Oh yeah, truly yeah. Uh yeah, I guess these Rust Rustaway against these is gonna be crazy. Um, because you remove the structure and you remove a relic, but hey, it's still decent. Not everybody runs, not everybody runs rust away on nature, but the last card of the expansion, the last card we're going to talk about is the dreadlord. Look at this. This guy looks kind of badass. It reminds me of some games. It feels like Batman got the Venom suit and now he's just going through his, uh, weird stage. Um, that's what I feel about this guy. Rustaway is usually run just in control. Yeah. No, nah, play guard. But, okay, let's go through it. The Dreadlord, 6 mana. At the end of your turn, summon the two strongest creatures that were destroyed this turn from either boy to your board and give them soulless. It kind of reminds me of Deception Legendary, the one that removes a minion from your opponent's graveyard and you get to play them i think that one is easier to use than the dreadlord because having them on the graveyard is easier than having the last two strongest minions that were destroyed uh essentially you'll have to wait a lot to play this guy um and it just makes yeah this reminds me of karst but this is more expensive than karst right like the karst is not even six mana i believe Cars is not even six mana, right? Uh, can I just go Karst? Can I 
Do I have a restriction? Why is it cards? Okay. Oh, no. I guess it's six mana. Yeah, I guess it's six mana, so... Mm, it feels like a Karst, but if, like, even Karst, I'm usually sitting on Karst waiting for something better. It's hard to get good value, though. Yeah, because, like, is it just me, or it feels a little bit underwhelming? Mm, because what if no minion was destroyed this turn? I mean, you can make sure it happened, but... No, but it has to be on your opponent's turn or your turn. So if your opponent didn't trade anything big, then this is kind of like lackluster. And they don't even get bleeds. Like, I think Karst is better. And how often do we see Karst being played? Not that often, right? Like, like Karst even removes the minion from your opponent's void. So it has like double value going on for him. For him. And Karst is not even on every Deception deck. Actually, it's not even played that much. So, I think the Dreadlord is a little bit underwhelming. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. Maybe I'm missing out on something. But I'm not super hyped about it. So, I'm just going to put it above um, Countess de Lapore. I think this makes a little bit more sense. I think I'm going to move on. Poison Grunge Berries. I think Capture Hearts okay there. I think Twisted Gates okay there. I think this one's okay there. I think C tier makes a lot of sense. I could be wrong about Imprisoned and this being really good, but like if the meta is full aggro, do I even want to play this card? I could see Light actually getting a lot of value from Full Moon, Fervor, and Howl and just a new art type appearing out of nowhere and fully utilizing these three cards. But it's really hard for me to rate them any other way if I can see, you know, the value right now. If I can see the cards. Did you ever play it against Keltusad? I did play it against Keltusad. Uh Oh, I guess this guy does it every turn. That's your point. Yeah, this guy does it every point. That's what you mean. At the end of your turn, it's still 6 mana for 6. You has way too many clears. Keltusad used to be good on, like, Arena. Or it used to be good if if there was like not a good efficient way of clearing a board. But I think we will have those. And I think this guy is going to get destroyed immediately uh, the moment he gets played. It is annoying, but I think Karst is better and nobody bats an eye about Karst. Oh, actually, I guess this guy needs to be cleared immediately. Karst doesn't get to redo it's af its effect over and over unless you have void hate so on that sense okay i see it dreadlord actually tr three tenths infinite value but minions have to be destroyed it's a little bit more interesting i understand the keltusat um you know but i still don't think it makes it way better i'm gonna put it high b tier um, it's a good neutral, but yet again, I think there's so many ways to clear six mana cost minions. Um, and then you have to be trading cards and you need a setup. You, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not super on board with this one. Even if it's like infinite potential, I still think it's like, it's okay. Might see play. I don't think a lot of decks will run it. Uh, but I think this is the end. I believe, my guys, my friends, this is the final tier list. We have one S tier guard, a few really good A tier guards, a bunch of B, a bunch of C, and a few D guards. Low key, this is how this is how a tier list should look like. This is the most balanced tier list we have ever done. You can see the normal distribution going boom, boom. You, 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 you see the normal distribution, guys? Is Racket Gatherer hard to set up? No, because he's a 4 mana, 4-5, four right? It's just good stats at uh, 3 turns uh, before you get to play this. So it's a big difference. Justice for Countess? Justice for Countess? Never. Count where, where are you, Countess? She is meant to be whatever she is. There you go. She's there. She's going to stay there, okay? 
you remember you're it's five mana five mana okay it's still two turns still two turns big difference and it's it's way different though it's way way different record gallery and this card uh to be honest i'm happy that i don't see crazy amount of broken cards as before true 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 i mean let me let me remove myself from from here so you get to see a clean look at the normal distribution we ended up having um low-key really nice low-key really nice maybe a little bit too many big cards but i think this just makes sense i think this just makes a lot of sense well, that was easy.